Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the video. Today we're talking uh, different strategies, maybe not the rarest, but maybe not the most popular outside of high elite level power lifters on how to increase that deadlift. It's uh, Thursday morning. I got a squat session, heavy squats, medium bench, and a quick pump before I go hang out with my mama. Happy holidays to you and yours. Happy New Year's to you and yours. Uh, give this a fucking, oh, I'm not supposed to curse. Give it a freaking like. If you guys like the videos, man, appreciate the love on the last one. Brand new videos every Monday and Wednesday. Let's dive in. So as we all know, there's a couple things involved with gaining strength and gaining muscle. Um, overall volume being one. How many sets, reps, at what weight we hit in a day, a week, a month, a year will help indicate um, how much strength or muscle we may gain. And it's not like a direct correlation. It's not, if I do 10,000 pounds of volume, I will gain 10 pounds on my deadlift or uh, a pound of muscle on my uh, dump, dump truck glutes. But um, it is that if I've been doing 10,000 pounds of volume on my glutes and I go up to 10, 10,100, then 10,200, 10,300, as time progresses, I will gain some strength or muscles if uh, I'm eating, sleeping, etc. Number two is lifting more weight over time. Obviously, one that adds to the volume, but two, uh, motor recruitment, right? So how many muscles our little brain can kind of fire, uh, how hard we can push, how many muscles we can fire in synchronization um, to move, whether it be jump, push, deadlift, whatever the move might be. Um, and then the other part of that that's tied in but different is the skill, um, motor patterns. Uh, just like basketball, you're shooting your free throws, you're shooting your free throws, you're shooting your free throws, you get that drilled into your body, uh, they become more automatic, a term people use a lot in sports. Man, that guy's so automatic, uh, meaning that he doesn't have to think about it, it just kind of happens, that's because they put in so many reps. Um, and the same thing goes for um, squats, deadlifts, and bench. Bench squats in particular are known for um, people hammering volume and hammering uh, frequency. Uh, frequency being how many times a week that we lift. And all these variations in programming, the volume, the frequency, the intensity, allow us to manipulate them so we can hit those three markers that allow us to get stronger and build more muscles, um, which is the ultimate goal for a power lifter. Um, and generally the ultimate goal for a bodybuilder or someone who wants to power build or an athlete even. Um, not every athlete wants to gain weight necessarily, but no athlete wants to get weaker and less muscle. There's no sport, nothing that ever that helps. You always want to probably be your strongest and have the most amount of muscle per body weight, weight class, or otherwise, um, will allow you to be the most durable and the most athletic. Be best at your sport, if it doesn't take away from the practice of your sport, basketball, tennis, whatever you're playing. Now, Bulgarian method, bench every day, squat every day, there's all these things that um, have gotten very popular, whether it be YouTube or otherwise, to allow people to really advance their squat and deadlift. And not only advance that, but advance the mindset that, oh, that guy squatted every day and he made great progress and his knees didn't explode. Well, that guy benched every day and his pecs just got a little bit bigger and he hit a bench PR. You guys have probably seen other YouTubers or Instagrammers do that. One that's um, very rare and maybe not talked about again, besides the elite power lifters, is deadlifting more often. I've found that most people, if their form is decent, even if their form isn't the greatest, uh, can deadlift almost two to three times a week. Why, how, how do we get there? Well, if you want the science, a uh, great article, it's probably a little bit old now, but uh, Chris Beardsley on Instagram is a great guy to follow. He just spits out pure science, but he basically showed that the general fatigue, everyone says, my CNS is going to explode and burn out if I deadlift more than every 10 days, and if I deadlift twice heavy in a month. Your CNS is not gonna explode, and you're not gonna burn out, and you're not gonna you blow your spine out, and your glutes are just gonna get big, juicy, thick, and strong. The only thing, the only thing stopping you from doing that is your tiny little mind and the placebo effect saying that I can't deadlift more than twice a week, or more than once a week, I get so tired of my CNS. Well, you're just talking yourself out of it. If you said that about any lift, it would probably feel heavy every single time you did it. The other thing stopping you from doing that, which is stopping progress or maybe halting your optimal progress, um, 
is that you haven't trained yourself to get there. So how do we get there? So you're deadlifting once a week on whatever program, uh, whatever you got off the internet, a coach, or you're just pulling. My first suggestion is to start with a heavy RDL, Romanian deadlift day, after another lower body day. So say you pull heavy on Tuesday, uh, Saturday would be a squat day or another lower body day, and you pull heavy RDL sets of five to 10. The other way to add it in um, is to do a speed day or a gimme day or a light day, or we call it a practice day. I like to call it practice, you call it recovery day. And so that Saturday you would take your competition stance and you would do 60 to 70%, five sets of three. Something that shouldn't tire you out, it should be easy, you can do it in your sleep. Do that for three to four weeks. Now your body's slowly conditioned to pulling twice a week. Um, what the science shows is that the general um, fatigue on the body, the systemic fatigue is very similar from squats and from deadlifts, um, which is, you know, when you think about it, kind of a duh. The only thing that may affect this is that majority of people or a lot of people, not majority maybe, probably majority, but a lot of people end up having a stronger deadlift than they do a squat. So the overall poundage or volume you handle in a deadlift session may be more than you handle in your squat session, just based on the fact that I squat 400 and I deadlift 450, right? So that's automatically gonna be a little bit more stress on the system, but it's not inherently the deadlift causing more stress on the system, which everyone thinks. Man, I could squat three times a week and I feel great. Well, that's because you've been doing it for four years, Timmy. Oh, I can only deadlift once a week, otherwise my CNS, I can't even grab the bar, I can't even wake up and I get a little shaky, 135 feels like hell. Well, that's because you've only been deadlifting once a week for the last four years. Um, again, once we throw in that gimme day, that practice day, or a hard stiff leg day, you'll be right back in the game. Then I suggest maybe going a little bit heavier on that gimme or practice day and you slowly ramp that up into some real working weight. So you have one kind of heavier main session, you have another session um, where you're handling some volume or some gimme, and then depending on your coaching, your style, your programming, your overall goals, you can start to switch that day to a heavier variation day. And that's how I typically train. I like to pull every three days or so, one being the main competition stance, which right now for me is sumo. I don't compete, but that's just the stance I feel most comfortable in right now, even though my conventional is banging as you guys saw in the footage so what I'll do is I'll handle a heavy single and all my back down heavy reps on the one competition stance day again that's just the name for it and then the other day I like to still go kind of hard um, but what I do is I choose variations that limit the overall amount that I can handle so if I go beltless limits overall an RPE beltless RPE 9 set of three beltless is gonna be less fatigue overall than a RPE 9 competition stance with a belt etc etc right because I'm limiting the amount of weight and volume I can handle by choosing the correct variation another one is the candido pull that I've been throwing in so every other week I'll do a conventional beltless for some reps hammering some shit out feel real good and then on the opposite week, I'll do the candido pull, also beltless. Sometimes I gotta strap up though, cause it's real hard, I got real stubby arms, I got little stubby hands. They're actually not that stubby, I got big old palms. You know what they say about that? But I got kind of short fingies. I have average fingies. Average fingies, above average personality, below average, but big old palms. So I'll do a snatch grip candido pull with some grip, uh, uh, beltless, so that's a wide stance, wide grip pull for some reps to also continue to build that up. Um, now, of course, you can throw in the accessories on both, but you gotta have to manage the volume. You can't do 10 sets of 10 maxed out on a belt squat on both days. It's, well, maybe you can, maybe you're a freak, but um, is that optimal for what we're doing? Or can we get more out of less? Can we do one really hard set of beltless, or sorry, belt squats, after each session until you know our progress kind of plateaus whether it's in weight or the main um, movement and then we can add a little bit we can add another set now we can do two or three good belt squat sets after those main sets point being the entire thing of programming is all just educated guesses good planning and working our way up but the main key is that don't be afraid and don't tell yourself you're gonna get weaker by deadlifting more than once a week. I almost wanna do it, but I don't wanna do it. I almost wanna pull like every day, like singles or something, just to prove to you guys and do this little anecdotal experiment. And maybe we will do it one day um, that it's very similar to squats, besides again, the overall poundage. But if you're managing your stress and fatigue from other lifts, you should be absolutely fine. Um, it's the same thing with dieting, and I talked about it in the other video. If you're telling yourself, man, I'm gonna lose 10 pounds, that means my squat's going down, then your squat's gonna go down. But if you continue to train very similarly, and just take away a small deficit and maybe add just a hair of cardio, your lifts do not have to go down. It's just old school adage, myth, rumor, 
that this happens and so we get it stuck in our head and of course if it's stuck in our head it's going to come to fruition um, whether you believe in something crazy like the law of attraction or whether you believe in placebo or whether you believe the power of the mind or just the fact that you can talk yourself into and talk yourself out of doing a lot of things in this world and that's kind of where I believe is that I can talk myself into being great and I can easily just as well talk myself into tucking myself into my couch and watching Harry Potter marathons on repeat for the next 30 years until this little journey on this little spinning planet's over but I digress I appreciate you guys so much comment below what you want me to cover in the next one I'm gonna drink a little caffeine we're gonna get into it hopefully you see some of the b-roll Man, I can't wait to Twitch stream with y'all. Twitch.tv slash Silent Mike with two Ks. We'll be there soon, I promise. I just gotta get things really rolling here in terms of the clothing and the, the front desk hours are, are a lot, but I want to come back and stream with y'all so bad. So I appreciate you, Silent Mike. I'm out of here. Happy holidays to you and yours.